Do not get overly involved. So the market's moving. It's very quiet tonight. It's 8.30. That's no, 8.23. It's almost 8.30. And we're waiting for the update on the half-hour bar. And it looks like we're crushing back again for another pullback, another round of pullbacks, and a constant churning of bullshit. So the art of trading bullshit. Well, here's the trick. you got to pick the appropriate bandwidth. So if you're going to trade in this little slot down here, you got to really load up on some swing trades and have the patience to wait for these things to get, like this is the trap, the spike into this um, obvious wick tip analysis of just picking the fucking wick tip and 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 putting your shelf here so you're always going to construct your uh the lonely wick is rules the world so uh, all the lonely people you know that song made a lot of money so down here sweet right um waited all week i mean all day for that I'll, waited all day for that now yesterday you could have had it either way on this side but uh let's let's not deny that this wick here is quite a quite a chunk of the of the whole situation and this probably could have lasted for five minutes who knows and go if you really want to forensically drill down you, you isolate that then you zoom out and you see what happened there it was double dramas up there it's all spiky actually uh, spent quite a bit of time before it uh, gave up the ghost there if you get rid of it, scrunch this down so this would be uh another uh, attempt uh, but i'm a seller all the way to the top of that i figure that this this giant hole here is going to take uh what's the fill time on this all right that's about eight hours so you have 12 hour scripts you put just put orders all day here but you only got half filled so it's not like you really killed it that great but yeah if you held to the next structure level is the obvious uh, let's just claim this is the pivot because it's it's good enough until here and then it's not. But that's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this, the last lonely wick. We've been there. So we could go down there again. So I grab these scripts and I lay them in and I just don't give a fuck. This, now this is the other key ingredient is that I know it costs me X for that. There's enough money in the account that, okay, maybe I'll lose $100 and I'll make $200. Maybe I lose 200 and make um, uh, nothing. So maybe I risk uh, 500 and I make 300 because they're all singles. So if the whole rack is sitting here and oh, I fill 280K filled, okay, we lost um, 120 bucks. So very tight stops. I wouldn't go tighter than an APIP stop, even in the Euro dollar, because what's the point of shipping something that costs so little? So if you're going to hold a trade for three days and make 300 pips because you can see the absolutely ridiculous price that's about to occur, possibly, in a, in a hole, and you just have a rack of orders in there. Now, this is just stupid um, dollar cost averaging. It's been going on for a long time with the added ingredient that you get to hand place them in logical places that uh, I suppose the computer could look back at that lonely wick and start stacking like psychotically scalps to make th five pips. Now I would make five pips because I have a hundred K sitting to make five pips. Well, I'll make 40 bucks. Okay. I'll make 30 bucks there. Almost guaranteed in the sense that if I, if imagine you put a, a heavy duty order um and just make these all 5k's just turn the switch on this and you can make this a 5k with one uh, edit and then just drop it here and say okay bitch bring it down here and this lasts for a week who's not taking that trade you have to be a fucking moron not to buy a plunge into this uh, 15, is the th 15, sorry, the five minute chart. So I've got all the detail I fucking need, right? How much fucking brains does it take 
So it's so funny. ICT guy could be cracking me up with this, this, that, and that. Dude, you got to lay this rack of tickets that you got to get in this thing, scalp it to the floor, right? Got to, say you got a half a pip spread, really, you know, gold account. Okay, you could do this trade. You could be the same guy going top tick Tommy on the other direction. Yeah, sure. But are you taking these trades? Are you up? Are you, okay, well, you just put your order down deep and just, for God's sakes, just martingale into it. There's enough money in the account. You're not going to blow up the account. Uh, you're going to, if it ever comes down here, there's going to be people buying at some point. Now, the problem is the longer it goes sideways, the more it's dealt, it's on a delta right now. It's the more the dramatic the breakout's going to be. Is it going to keep going north? Jeez. So here's a delta right here on the four hour. It's drifting. Uh, this week's been bullish, so to speak, but it could be trapped. This could be game over. We just don't know. So what we do is we scalp this thing. That was a scalp. Um, on the long side, it took you a long time to make money. Like you're like, okay, you know, like here's the first Delta. And then it kind of has to consolidate. Okay. This is the first, this is a great trade because all the breakout bots are on that. Um, our size under three, we're assuming it's in an uptrend based on the latest trend line, which is here. I did in the last video. I'm just going to put it crudely at these first valley to valley so you have to zoom in and look at the simplicity here and of course if i extend this into outer space yeah the argument is we're going to wait for it to come back to here and this confirmation but eh, you know if you're just going to trade like i'm trading which is i don't give a fuck about that i'm just going to buy like any kind of pullback like any kind of wick i want it so at the end of the close, I hopefully have locked in some kind of profit so I can ride the, um, uh, maybe I'm so fucking bullish. I'm going to buy every pullback under 50. Buy, 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 buy. I'd be in one, two, three, four, five K, four oh, K right now. I guess I could call this thing. It looks like if you put a line dot on here, it's better if you see a line dot, cause then you can count the actual periods. That's why RSI is so good. It's so good because it's so crude. And at this level, you can see. And now it's drifting, in the, and it's probably going to tank. Um, I'd rather buy the wick and capture this uh, falling knife uh, trade for me is having a big rack of tickets like this and just uh, put them in. This is, um, I think this is a 50 pip window. This is a. This is a big swing trader script here. Now, if these, la I would make these last maybe all week because if I don't come back or make them last all day, but this is like a 30 pip window, you know, and that's, um, God, that's, uh, 10 K. So that's 10 K laid in, uh, and you're risking like $18 to make uh, 36 bucks roughly. 30 pips stop to make uh, 60 pips. That can, that can happen. That's a news event easily. And uh, I put it in deep, you know, like start here. Maybe these are the one hours up here. If this is a one hour chart, those would be one hour uh, scripts for me, pending limits. And if you're a heavy hitter, I'd say or if you in some the guppy or something like this, you want to put in this um, 80 pips coverage with um it's not like really logarithmic it's kind of just uh heavier down here at the bottom it's like a light top heavy bottom guitar strings here's the uh, 50 pip um window and that is stacked um 10k in there again so these are oh, the 6k here but that seats are heavy duty uh going to cost you some 120 bucks here i think uh, 120 dollars just to make 60 so this is the worst ratio i have too um high probability trade though is you're, you're saying i'm going to buy here in this psychotic window and i got to stop in there 
that's outside of that. I won't lose any of the ticket. The first ticket to get plucked off is that top one, but it's a linear script. It's not getting bigger as the thing goes deeper. So if I had a robot running it, he'd come in. I have a uh, like a time bot. He just comes in at the, every four hours. He does the same same trade over and over until I turn him off, or until I maybe it has a timer on it. But uh, so that's what I got running. But I'm just doing it by hand because um, it doesn't make sense to keep refreshing. Uh, deep orders when there's no news coming out. Because it's probably, you know, by the time it gets there, I really don't want anything on the platform that's not going to make sense in the long run, and there's not going to be that many tickets like that. So really close to the market is the ideal thing. So if you're trying to, if you're stalking somebody, so to speak, you're stalking the market, you want to be as tight as you can without letting them know you're following. I guess people do think the market can see their tickets, but so if you're paranoid about that, right, it should be trading. But so the um, the view is that, you know, your your trade plans mine's based upon um, this laying traps for um, volatility traps or people get there's going to be a bar fight and I've got an ambulance. So I'm an ambulance chase, right? I'm counting on something going really terrible. I own a bump shop. Like, I hope it snows out. We need some people to crash a little bit today. Everybody's in such a hurry. Yeah, this will slow you down. It's like that, that Twilight Zone episode. You come into town, and it's just like, well, I guess you're just going to have to uh, cool your jets, buddy. Yeah, we'll fix your car, all right. You don't worry. You just sit down there, so you'll be okay. By the way, we... Uh, we don't have any car parts, but we do have Forex uh, trading terminal. You want to see if you can make your money back here? Come here. Let me show you how to trade. <laughs> that guy at the, uh, the beehive guy. Here, I'll take somebody off the street. Hey, how do you feel about risking, like, your life savings on this, uh, waiting for the news to come out on FOMC? You want, want to trade with me? Watch my platform lock up and, uh-oh, looks like... Uh, but it's funny, all this news coming out about Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin's just getting trashed. I'm a, I'm a huge uh, bull on the Bitcoin, though. I mean, come on. This is like... When it, it's when it gets to about eight grand, <laughs> so there's people are selling it, you know? And people are like, I'm going to get out. I can't take it anymore. I go, well, I'll take that. So give me, give me that penny stock that's all the way back to the starting gate. Yeah, it turns out the fucking Bitcoin is the cure for cancer, you know. It's fucking crazy. As long as it's in your account, your ledger, you just hold up. What you do is you hold up the uh, QR code to your, um, you know, if you your body, and it just cures you, man. It's, it's incredible. People don't want to talk about it, but we're not shy over here. We can see into the algos and the, um, what's it called? The institutional traders, the traders that have been institutionalized. Oh, yeah, the regulators. It's they, you know, as long as you take the regulator out and take him to a nice bar, a nice titty bar, you know, what's going to happen there is uh, he's going to prove everything you're doing. Oh, yeah, no, I think what you're doing is just amazing. You're amazing. Yeah, you're just what are you, a vegetarian, you said? Yeah, yeah, I'm a vegetarian. It makes it so it makes it okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the euro's boring. It's in the delta, and there's no drama tonight, and we're waiting. So this is the, the other problem with trading is that um, if you miss the party, <laughs> if you didn't wake up at three o'clock in the morning for the fucking crazy shit, some uh, news came out, and um, who's got time for this shit? And there's always something crazy. The bid rate, that's crazy. That'll rock the shit out of this euro. This minimum bid shit comes out at like some bizarre uh, 745. You're like, oh, that's fuck. What the hell? And I got tickets laying out there because I just don't care. Uh, I guess I got tickets out there irregardless because whether the news is able to push it there or not, it doesn't 
change the fact that it is an obvious void that needs to be uh, uh, probed into, you know, and it's going to happen. You can't go sideways forever. They say status quo at any price, but, um, and they always want moderation, but that's only so that people can um, live on the edge still. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm always wondering, who are these people? They keep saying these people are dying of fentanyl. Like, who are you hanging out with, man? <laughs> Do you know anybody? Please phone and call in. Please type, make in the comments. I don't ask for comments, but this time I will. You know, anybody that's just like fucking, oh, I just did, you know, I was not doing some fentanyl last night. I just got carried away. It's fuck crazy. I don't, I don't want to do that again. Yeah, that's why I started drawing trend lines and shit. I knew I was, I was like a meth head drawing trend lines. Yeah, just couldn't. It, it's like, yeah, I was getting all twitchy. I got a Gartley going one night. And this Gartley acid. Uh, 618, that 618 acid. <laughs> when we were kids, they had this, they had this Star Wars acid. So, like, you'd have little, pictures of the uh, Star Wars characters. It was rough back then. Kids, kids were rough back then. Rough and ready, but now now the Bitcoin's crashing. It's just, it's it doesn't get any better than this, honestly. Everybody, everybody was calling out for a million dollars. You have to love it. It's so, oh, they say hope springs eternal. <laughs> and then some, right? Oh, jeez. Here, let me let me whip up some. I got to turn off the indicators to Bitcoin. So the, the numbers of Bitcoin and uh, <laughs> it's, it's so outlandishly priced. People could believe it. That's what happened, people said. I can't believe it. No shit. So we're all the way back to the starting gate. Look at this. this is the, I've got a delta on the daily Bitcoin. I'm saying this is a buy. I know. I don't really. I know you can't believe me because I like to buy everything, but I really do believe that if you don't buy Bitcoin, it's 16 <laughs> You're nuts. I mean, just for the joke of it. This thing is supposed to be in a million bucks. Come on, man. Come on. Who thought it was going there? No offense. No offense if you, if you bought Bitcoin at 60 grand or 40 grand or you pull back the Just, just lie to me if you bought it at. Uh, please tell me you just your first purchase of Bitcoin. Hey, I'm buy some more eight grand. <laughs> I would if I was long from sixty. I would get. A, I would have a loan. I would get a loan out, and I would fucking load the wagon. I'd be, all right, guys. Uh, it's time to. It's time to call my friends and family. And tell them Bitcoin has never been this cheap in a long time. I would, you know, people are buying this thing at 10 grand. I'm telling you what, you don't think that the exchange, it, they, I think they still trade on it. They didn't pull it off the exchange, did they? This thing still trades over. And so it really is a penny stock. It's it it's the ultimate penny stock in a sense because it is the, um, oh, geez, I guess. Well, the the original Bitcoin, and then you have all these little guys. So the Bitcoin will be like the Dow Jones of the uh, the faithful gauge of proper price. And for all the charting people, it's funny because it's just nothing but the history of drama. Uh, and the double top is so fucking obvious on the monthly that you'd have to be a moron really at this point because so much time's gone by and <laughs> there's some twin beaks up there oh you you may want to think of this uh, but that's a double top now can we ever take we, we could retest it we could take it out sure it could go to a million dollars forget what i said it could go a million dollars yeah that's true 
Um, right now, I say it's fucking crazy buying the daily. Like, who's not buying under this floor? The seventeen thousand dollar floor? Are you nuts? So I'd be accumulating it at least. Um, every time it drops two grand, I would just buy twice as much because I could have spend more money on it. Uh, the leverage goes up, the price goes down. Same thing on the euro. The euro trade, people that have been accumulating euro at this point, and, you know, who the fuck cares? It's so funny because as soon as the interest rates um, went up, you notice the fucking euro, the, the, the euro went up. Everybody's raised interest rates. You know, it's, it's, they're chasing, it's all, um, the, the back, backlash is so fucking obvious that, uh, yeah, they're going to start drilling. Oil's fucked. Fundamentally. I mean, this is a fundamental argument. But the fundamental background is always there. The market is the liquid liquidation point for um, reality to come in, I guess, and the, these things equalize. That's the argument. That makes sense. Equalization of pressure. And once the vacuums fill... We go sideways. 80% of life is just, okay, you know. All right. And every now and then somebody's like, oh, really? You want to you wanna go get a hotel room and make babies? Well, let's go. Yeah, let's, let's, make it, let's get some kind of, like, you'd be, you could be the, that would make you the mama baby or whatever, the baby mama. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah, that's a plan. I'm going to get a post-it note. Let me write a note to myself on that. Oh, I gotta pay attention. So, it's all these zigzags and all this nonsense. Look at this fucking Bitcoin on a daily. But what a gold mine, right? If you if you have a trade plan that involves making five hundred to a thousand dollar moves in Bitcoin, I guess hopefully you're trading on leverage to make it worth your while. But even on this daily chart. There's very clean peaks and valleys in the closing price. I can't say that for the wicks. And the wicks are really nothing more than volatility. The closing price is all that really matters uh, at the end of the day, so to speak. And here you can draw a monthly chart on top of it just by connecting the uh, intersection of that dotted line vertically with the line chart. It's some zigzag point there. And you could draw all your Gartleys and bullshit and Fibonacci's on the line chart very easily because there's only one choice. There's not this, oh, which peak do I put it on? And no, it's fucking obvious. Plus, it's inside. It's the delta of the price all the time. It's the close. So I'm looking high, low, close. Fuck the open. You leave that for candle traders. So I'm not really a candle trader. Although I, I look at it on my phone. Because it's really obvious um, where we're at in that time frame as the dipstick, is, as the wax is uh, going up and down on the wick. <laughs> and uh, that's what's giving you the end. The final candle is it going to be a bullish candle or bearish candle or, you know, a green or a red. I go hollow. I use the classic. I go hollow and... Um, filled in so my phone it's white down and hollow up black hollow up and so i've been looking at that for years on the phone and i'm like okay it looks like we could yeah that looks like, and i usually don't want to get in the shorts if i even if i know it's going to tank because most of the stuff i wrote was on the long side at least the double clicks and when I run the double clicks, I know that uh, this is going to be a, a buy idea. You know, it's all about buying. Now, the sell side, I did have double clicks for sell stops only, which I would trade it like that. I don't even mind putting in stop entries, but on the sell side only. <coughs> in other words, almost like I'm going to do a, um, a uh, money management on myself. But your broker has to let you hedge if you're going to do that. But I usually just trade one direction. Um, market seems to be, if you wait long enough, it's going to have a rally. Uh, wait, uh, 
a sell-off. Go waiting. This is daily chart, so you can imagine the torture here. I mean, you're not going to wait. I'm going to just trade the wicks. Like, I would trade the wicks all day long here, all the wicks on the daily, all just crazy, psycho, overdone, climax to the edge. You're going to just keep selling that edge. In the Bitcoin, I don't know if the spread is shitty here, though. So I don't trust. Maybe these are uh, bullshit prices here. But it looks like at the it, the clearing down here when they carve this out. So here's your lonely wick in Bitcoin on the daily, and there's a big clearing house there, and people are probably go, oh, we'll stop. Why? Well, I guess if you got your stops down here and you're long because you're trying to go for this target up here, then I guess that's true. This is another top tick, Tommy. As soon as they take this high out, everybody's all giddy because it took out the high the last month. Well, gee, it's like it's just done because it filled. All the sellers here got filled. I would certainly be those people. This is the high probability trade. You've got all your sell limits in this big thing waiting for it to get hit. Here's your first scalp back to the starting gate. You know, Back to the beginning of the... Uh, first zigzag there. So you got the. You get filled there. If you can withstand this, you could have cashed out here of everything. You actually came back through the floor, and if you sold this top tick, Tommy, you can make it back to there and then some, and then, of course, the ultimate giant fill that goes back super deep, and it's. Uh, Hopefully got enough money to keep selling up here, though, because according to this logic of selling, this technique, this backfill or overloaded into the zone, this is going to what you have to do. You have to sell 1x here and 2x here. Sell bigger here. It's just psychologically demanding because you're in an uptrend, supposedly, right? Everybody drew their channels out of this. Like, we're going up. Can't you see? Like... Oh, Bitcoin's going to be okay. I remember guys doing YouTube videos. I said, yeah, that, that does sound good. I like what you're saying. The guy said, oh, this could, this could be the big bottom, you know. I bet you said that back here, right? This could be, well, this really is an amazing fucking rally. Um, of course, that was built, that, that rally is built because of this, this void and this constant pound down where these people on a daily basis have had fulfillment of this, so. Uh, about to become a top, not to the tick necessarily. And then let's take out the basement floor here and just blow people's minds, uh, make a new low. I think this is a new low. I think that's a new low. And so this, this short squeeze is just enormously fast, quick, hard, dirty, and brutal, right? Because it's just like if this wasn't enough compression, that is heavy, just trapped and in, painted into a corner. And now it needs relief because the equalization, the pressure is now here. Now this very narrow pressure zone, well, this is the dead cat bounce, so to speak. Because I don't know, this cat actually looks like it hit a trampoline. But uh, that's not a dead cat bounce, I guess. But it is, in, I guess, compared to this. Now this, what what is this called? Well, it's called, well, everybody has a trend line here, maybe, right? I mean, this is the answer. This is the trend line break argument entry. Well, okay, the turtle traders and everybody that sells on stops, you know, they, they're going to sell here, you know. Um, it's not a delta quite but it's just it's delta here kind of quiet and everybody's like well this better hold they're like well certainly certainly this should hold and then it's just like oof i think there was a way to scalp out of that though looking at this now gosh i think there might have been a exit maybe you could have held through that if you could have bought here all the way down if you would have bought 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 i think you could have cashed out almost it didn't quite make it back to the floor, but it did for a millisecond there the next day. You would have had to have some deep pockets. You could have buy this day hard and this day hard. And, eh, you know, 
if you started on limits, you're actually underwater from here right now. You just bought all the way down. You bought this void according to the rule, right? So, so the the uh, the void rule, or how many how many days back is this void? Would be another criteria for the robot. Because look at this this carve out, see, and then once that. That, that this is the cup and handle idea. Well, this is the cup. This is the, once it crushes this lonely wick right here. Zoom. Now it's above this one. So, wow. There's plenty of money. People are making a lot of money over these uh, five days from that if their targets are very tight. But look at all this hanky panky here. This is just nonsense. It's eighty percent fucking nonsense. This is literally eighty percent here. I would say here is a high drama moving Bitcoin. And nonsense, high drama nonsense. It's kind of nonsense. Serious drama, extreme drama. Then all nonsense. This is all bullshit. This included, and then it kind of looks like a. Oh, like a horse or something and then this is the head of the beast like here's like here's his legs this is the beast trade it's his tail like this is last this is how he got here and then kablam takes out his f feet are he amputated comes back here now it's gonna come back now there's gonna be so many people selling here. I think for the uh, for the easy scalp, and then eh, eh, logic is it's gonna if a bottom becomes a top, then logic is it's gonna go down that trend trader logic. And range trader logic is just just gonna be caught in bullshit, and you're gonna have some dumb shit just took over the fucking Republican Party. Oh uh, yeah, so I'm gonna what we're gonna do here is that I'm gonna steer this boat. Really. Are you like the guy on the boat? Remember the video of the, the hot chick on the boat and the guy starts to pick up speed and he gets all wobbly and he grabs onto her hand, squeezes it against the fucking boat handle. And she's screaming and just freaking out. It's like that. It's going to be like that. It's going to be a rough ride, people. So get your Bitcoin while it's fucking at uh, deep discount. 15. Do I hear 14? Do I hear 13? I'm buying all the way down, man. In my mind's eye, I'm buying. This is a no-brainer. It's brainless trading. And that's another thing. You're thinking too much about it. If you like the idea of owning Bitcoin, you cannot fucking beat these prices. It's so funny that the news is all like, well, this guy was using. So who cares? If it survives that news, then it really is worth something. Here's the thing. This fucking bullshit this guy was doing. What, some guy, some vegetarian guy has Bitcoin out of us? Who cares? That's making, that not, has nothing to do with the price of Bitcoin. But it certainly proves that with that news out there and Bitcoins at this price, the logic is there, the fundamental logic view. Fucking A, it must be worth something because that fucking crazy news and it's still holding like... Uh, 16 grand people can't fucking believe it. Don't forget, it's the end of the year. There's people trying to lock stuff in. Time's a ticking here. Countdown to ecstasy. Coming up on... Uh, it's going to be 2023, I guess. Jesus fucking Christ. It's a, it's a, it's a fucking uh, time warp. People drive fast. People go 80 miles an hour. 90, I see people do 90 miles an hour now. It's because gas came down like a dollar. <laughs> people go 90. I'm like, dude, you're doing 90 miles an hour? I'm like, okay. Yeah, really? I suppose run flat tires, you know, let's just, let's have, just go out flat out. Run them flat. What a great, this is the beginning of the, this could be the beginning of the biggest bull market of Bitcoin right now. Coming into the end of, it survived Coronaville, it survived um, 
tons of uh, irregularities. <laughs> My robots perform so good, except they do have some irregularities, such as, um, well, some people, um, such as, yeah, I know what you're saying. And oil, we're waiting for oil to go down because they're going to start drilling. Thank fucking God, you dumb shit. Get the fuck off that goddamn electric plug. I'm using that for my guitar amp, please. And I'm going to, just to rub in your face, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to put a power soak on it. So I'm actually going to run the amp hot, but then I'm going to put a power, like a brake on it. Pull the parking brake, put a boat anchor on the output, load it up. Cab simulations. We don't want to even hear real cabinets anymore. Fuck you. We got time for that. What do you think of my whole bunch of Marshall cabinets in here just for you? Get out of here with your samples and your vocoder fucking. Has anybody put a vocoder on a on a auto tune yet? I want to stack up an auto tune to a pitch shifter to a vocoder to a talk box, then back into a wah wah into the uh, harpsichord, and then uh, back into the Leslie for another round. And then I think I'm just gonna run the whole signal through a phone degrade it people can't tell what how did you yeah i know but it doesn't sound hi-fi i know that's the magic it's like we live like cavemen we're all gonna get candles and we'll just we'll just call the department of candles if we need more wax we can all trade candlesticks we can all agree on everything it'll be like utopia Yeah, I think Bitcoin is going to be a buy. I would sell the gold. Gold's had it. Crude oil's had it. They go together. It takes uh, crude oil to dig gold. Oh, they say there's all the gold in the world fit two Olympic swimming pools. Come up with this bullshit, man. Who says stuff like that? Who are these people? Well, what, do, don't you know? Oh, that's right, the institutions, the cartel, the gold cartels. I know they got it up, they got it in for me. They just don't like me no more. Bitcoin got hammered. Look at this poor puppy. Wow. It, could, it looks like a good tank, actually. Looking at the weekly here, it's got another chunk left in it, maybe to the downside. Just another buying opportunity. It's kind of a stop. I love it trade. Oh God! Don't tell me you're going back to the starting gate of the breakout. Everybody's been waiting for ten thousand. Or well, they've been waiting for like I'd say you know I'll take it at thirteen, twelve thousand. I'll take it. I'm gonna load the wagon certainly down here if we ever see that price. And that's why I use this. Uh, trend channel to is to project the possibility of where do you think we could get here inside this miter box analysis and we're just gonna go for the tightest envelope I can find so using this as a index of uh, momentum but just in an envelope I'm just gonna put it right in the it's gonna be the pitch fork center point because we don't care about the rest of the chart it really doesn't matter at this point the only other inflection would be what is in front of it if we copy this over to the um let's see if we can copy yeah we can't reach it from here but i'll just put up another one what's the copy uh, if we find the leading edge that we could be going into here in the next um and it's gonna take some time to get there but so i'm gonna put it mirrored on top of this one i use this in my last known index and just carry this forward 
So we'll be like this. There's a channel inside the channel. So I'm picking the tightest channel I can find. This is the weekly chart, so I have to. I don't have a choice. I've got to get it in there tight. We could bang against this thing. That's the the bullish argument is that we're going to go up this uh, stairway to heaven, which I'm going to index on this last known uh, price pulse here. So I'll call this the crossover point. This is like an idealistic. Pro forget the wax, but you know we hit this um, symmetrical move here. And then that gets blown out. Our next chance to draw the similar kind of, let's see, what would you call this uh, inflection here? I guess it's going to take you about a um, couple. It's going to take a half a year to get through some of these levels, right? I mean, this is insane. Like, this is a quadruple, I think it's just it's a quadruple top here. How often does that happen? On the left side, we've got this unbelievable on closing prices, just dome here. And But this is a signal price pulse climax here. If you count this, I guess you could say there's two twin peaks there. It's the weekly chart. It's noise-free. We're under the floor here, so to me, I'm, I'm fucking long Bitcoin just makes total sense. I bet people thought this was the tippy top of Bitcoin. They're like, holy shit, I sold this quadruple top and you wouldn't believe how much fucking money I made. But then people came on the other side. And this would have been the lonely wick where all the buyers would have got in here. And they loaded the fucking wagon and they scalped to the floor. They were happy with that. But it fucking went beyond that, came back. It's a pretty, pretty amazing story, actually. This is Top Tick Tommy here. The exchange decided they're going to start legitimizing it here. Yeah, we're going to offer this. In the, I was either here or here. The, the exchange said, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll cover that trade. Sure. Good to go. Then Kablamo was the first kind. I think people at this point were like, okay, well, that doesn't bother me because this is the top and if it comes back here I'll just buy more there okay, that was a good trade I'll buy more there and they, they're buying and then, and then this kind of shocked them because this is the new lonely wick because this vacuum started to form then they raped this wick the, the, I mean this this floor was the people like oh we're off to the races this is ultimate support now we're going up this channel can't you see it so the miter box this this channel was doomed. No, kids, the train's going down these tracks. This will be the outside of the channel. You can put a million channels in here. Doesn't matter which one you're going to take. And the bullish argument at this point is that we're going to break uh, this. Maybe consolidate here. Here comes a new year. Do we keep dripping down? It's not so bad. Uh, I think I hit about um, 10 grand by the, so here's where you're able to do uh, projections. Could you ride along this line? Is this conceivable? You spill out, end up here, or down at this line where this price meets this end of the year. Or do you just uh, end up here? All it's going to take for this thing to do is stall out and then, you know, at the end of the year, people liquidate because for whatever reason, some people do. They close their books out and end up here. Not inconceivable. You can make the argument that this entry here and you covered here. That's a good chunk. And it came back into resistance. It hit your perfect uh, pivot, pivot on an angle. It touches it. But here it doesn't make any sense. It ignores it. It just cuts through it. There's no trade there. Here it's perfect. Comes back, touches it. Sell, sell, but not really. Kind of doesn't really give it to you until it smashes down here. 
the other view of the, why this is happening and are these good trades and did that make any sense is if all you did was uh, run trailing sell stops, like I said, um, or buy stops, but sell stops here, you had trailing sell stops because you're like, well, I don't know if this is going up. And just in case I'm wrong, I'm going to cancel replay so I have a sell stop to sell 1K, then I sell 2K, 3K. I keep upping the size. So this is Martin Galling in with, uh, I guess, uh, confirmation entry, Martin Galling, I call this. Because you're going to say, as soon as they break out, it's breakout trading. I'm bearish. Fill me on a stop, please. I'm a complete fucking goober. In fact, every time it goes up one day, I'm going to double the size of that. I'm going to make that go from a 1K to a 2K. It'll be like a 6K by the time it gets up here. Then they finally fill me. And as soon as they fill me, I automatically put a stop in that's this wide. You know, you're just going to pick a number, say. This way, you will be in that trade. And if that number doesn't bother you, this would be like discipline trade. This is a robot. A robot should be able to pull this one off. Or a human, easily a human. But of course, you got to show up every day. The robot would show up every day on Bitcoin. That's the beauty. So when did this trade fail, though? So this one, and don't forget, if this is your stop, where's your target? Here, break even? No, you want your target to be down here. Is it probably not on every ticket? That's why you run multiple tickets. So if you put a sell stop, 1K, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6K, you get filled. Um, you have another sell stop here, you get filled. You didn't take profits. They just killed you. So that's why it doesn't work. Um, here, you, you want to be uh, buying on limits and selling on stops. And if you have, it's going to, like an insurance policy, it's going to cost you more. But since this move is so extreme, when you run hedges, you need wider targets. So you have to play this. You could have played this the same way, too. You could be long on limits here. But if you have great ratios on everything, you just have to have the patience to wait for this price pulse. to happen which is the same price pulse here so the consolidation that's going on here you could have a symmetrical hedge on at this point same thing here and it's going to break either way right it's either going to collapse here and start crushing this or it's going to break above this and it's going to top tick tommy out somewhere up in here so right now it's consolidated, it's drifting, but this is kind of um, what causes smash outs in either direction. So this one was a smash up. And it may take to the end of the year to just, and God knows what happens, right? All of a sudden, uh, what's the country that decided to make everything uh, priced in Bitcoin or something? or Bitcoin backed coin for some country, I can't remember. And um, I don't know what difference it makes because um, what's worse, the open market deciding what it's worth or some dumb shit in a room? So I think it's better to have let the people decide what this fucking thing's worth. And if they bid it down to like five grand and it sits at five grand till you're dead, at least, at least it's almost... Um, it's a real currency then, because currencies don't move like this, dude. No, there's no fucking currency on the planet that goes from boom to boom. I'm sorry. The, the euro dollar moved down 10 cents. This thing moved down like a zillion dollars. Think about it. That thing moved, euro dollar moved 10 cents against the dollar. This thing moved how much? It's not even, it's wrong. Of course it's false. <laughs> Look at this motherfucker. 
I'm still blown away. I can't get my brain around Bitcoin. What happened here, people? I bought it at two hundred dollars. Then you're up. You should be fucking. You should be like totally not needing any kind of like meds at all. You should be good to go. You're that guy. You got it all together. You're gonna be fine. The Bitcoin man, that's so adorable. That is so cute. But the monthly chart is mind blowing. That's where my head explodes. It's on the monthly. Every time I put it on, it crashes the computer too. The beat down looks like um we did take out this top. This is supposed to be support up here. Don't forget. For a lot of people kept talking about this price level here. This is the big buy. That's the, the juicy point to get in. We just destroyed that. The scalper has dipped into that, and then they didn't even get it back to this floor on the monthly. And that is some serious crush. But this is the hope and the dream is that here, but I'm, we already took this out. So here's the last known supply zone. This would be the next one here is almost the same as this top I don't think this top matters anymore because it got destroyed by this and that's why I don't really know if this top mattered I'm not sure these tops matter anymore to be honest with you I think that all that mattered was when this thing started collapse it was it was taken out the last month's lows then the last month's lows and this was the lonely wick that everybody probably could have scalped maybe there's a scalp in there and this would be like the loneliest wick and then after that it's going to be the supply under this month the supply here so this to me is what the market sees currently is all it sees is this this is all gone this is all gone and destroyed. There's only this, and there's the beginning. This really doesn't mean shit anymore, I don't think. Maybe to somebody, but not to the... I don't think to the market. The market only looks back at the most recent known, and this is all that's known. And the other side that's known is these highs. There's pressure building up here, but is it enough to oh, always have to go through these kind of God knows what? And then I think so many people would cash out here at uh, it's almost 30000 that it would be all over. If you got it for 16 and it makes it back to 30, you just doubled your money. It makes it back to 32. I mean, if you could double your money in this thing, that's a good trade. Really, it is. This would probably be the most ultimate breakout. This is the cleanest. This is just a fascinating example of the fractal factor that this delta and this one are so exquisitely <laughs> this is like the baby version the offspring of this big kahuna perfect perfect penny stock everybody's excited everybody had a wet dream and then uh oh the long and winding road. And this one's kind of like, well, can't we do that again? Well, I guess, but you know, you're kind of slow and you're limping now. Like, you don't even know what day it is. Oh, I think we can do it one more time. And all of a sudden, somebody brings over some Peruvian flake and you're doing just mounds of blow like Scarface. And you're like, God, I could just about, you know, let's go buy a Ferrari feeling kind of frisky tonight let's get a lamborghini 
Let's just go to the showroom. Honey, look at how much money I made in Bitcoin. Then next month, you crash the car and you're like, oh gosh, you know, I should have got out up here. Oh, but wait, I remember these times. This is just crazy. And then come people come back and they go, oh no, that's a good buy. That's 618 pullback. What are you fucking retard? Look at 618. There's Top Tick Tommy from here. Oh, it's well, 50%. It's Fibonacci's 50% level pullback. Fucking ain't load the wagon, dude. What's it at? 36. Fucking ain't load the wagon. Double your money. Kabloom. That's a tremendous move. And you still didn't get out. And then... If you didn't get out there, what are you going to do? People are going to buy this pullback. And boy, did they. They bought here, right, because they bought this pullback. Smart money trade, right? Fuck yeah, well, you like stupid to you? <laughs> Dude, you know what our side is. I don't think you know what I'm talking about, man. When I'm talking about these wicks, they don't lie. These wicks don't lie. A dead bodies in these wicks. Oof. I was so bullish at the end of the year. I heard an ad on TV said, buy Bitcoin. Right at the end of the year, and I bought some. Did you? You heard an ad on the radio? Yep. God, I remember my neighbor wanted me to buy some Bitcoin. It was about here. I go, oh my God, my neighbor's talking about Bitcoin. There's a problem. <laughs> we got to get out. My first indication. He doesn't know anything. You don't have to, right? Actually, if he bought here, I would say good work, but think of the guy on the street that bought here because he got train line all drawn up on there. And boy, when Mark got up in here, you know, when his cloud trading got triggered and all got a Hakanashi and a Tikanishi going. And he went long. <laughs> he went hog long right here. And you know what happened? I don't know, but I bet you're going to tell me. That's right. What happened was he blew up his whole account. His wife left him. <laughs> Hit him with a frying pan. Left. Stormed out. He, he's just buying more. He's living in his car. He's buying more Bitcoin, he told me. These are real traders, man. Guys living under a bridge. There's a guy down at the gas station. I kind of want to get him a trading account. I don't want him to lose his mind, though. Here. Here's 50 bucks. You're in a 5K. <laughs> don't blow up the account. It's on your phone now. Babysit it for me. I wonder if he could do it for me. Here's the phone. How responsible can you be to trade? You have to show up for work on time. Show up for the news. Have the robot launch tickets for you all day long. Check in every now. Hey, how's it going? I would turn on a. I would write a robot for the market. Right, the way it is, I just write a robot right now that just keeps dropping pendings like this all week long. I just keep adding to the account. Supply zone in here. Wait a minute. So right now we're in the sweetest buy zone in the world. And then this is the next sweetest. But I'll buy all the way to, on the way to that because I'm not sure. I'm not certain it's going to hit my optimal trade entry. I don't believe that there is any kind of ultimate strategy. Here the buy stop uh, idea failed. It looks good on paper. Buy stops, buy stops, cancel, replace. Big fill. Um, if you have too tight a stop, they destroyed you. Much better to put the buy limits in here and build a position to the long side. Although sometimes, like I said, in the ultimate delta, here both trades work with great ratios. There's no way you can trade this move in Bitcoin if you don't have 
the widest fucking stops that were ever invented, which is about $20,000 stops. And it also presupposes you're going to get the fuck out and trade each zigzag properly. You're going to you're going to sell, you're going to buy, you're going to sell and not be swayed by your neighbor or the news or the or the chart and just you go while well, you're on the I mean, you can only imagine, this is the monthly chart. Imagine what the fucking daily chart looks like during that shit. There's, that's where the quadruple top is. And Bitcoin is right here in the weekly. That's why it's such a, it's bizarre. It's a clean top. It, that is nuts. And it's just fascinating as fuck. And I, we are all the way back to the fucking starting gate. Like, who couldn't see that shit coming? And this is the scary moment. Oh, I wonder what people now here. I most technicians, so to speak. I just I got to go back and watch some bitcoins. I want to go. Give me the time period of this, and let me see the. There's a video I did. There's a guy out there. He's got. I can't blame him. You know, there was his his pitchfork. His Andrew's pitchfork. Andrew's pitchfork. <laughs> Uh, yes, maybe it's like this. <laughs> You're projecting off the top of this line. And of course, the Fibonacci extensions. <laughs> Don't forget the Fib, the Fib extensions that could possibly exist to the north. <laughs> Four six one eight two six one eight. <laughs> Remember, empowered trading the two six one eight. You got to understand, people don't have the patience. I don't. To sit in a trade like this Bitcoin trade. Did you trade Bitcoin? Yes, I did, sir. <laughs> Tell me, where'd you get in, son? Now, don't lie. <laughs> where'd you get in? Right here. Well, my MECD crossed over. I got in right here. Let me show you. I know you're not going to believe me, but. <laughs> I got a lot of trading books and I studied real hard. Been trading a real long time. So what I did was I, I knew I should draw a trend line on the monthly. <laughs> I was hoping I was going to live for two more years so I could put the trade on. <laughs> Just hoping and praying. Like I saw this spike and I go, nope, they're not going to trick me into buying it. So I drew a trend line. I waited another year for another psychotic here on fire bullish um this must have been where where bitcoin cured cancer right here at least in the news and then i drew a trend line and I waited for that trend line to break not true story right <laughs> people sell courses on it so i ever broke it pulled back and got confirmation <laughs> so i got in real heavy here but I'm only on a stop entry basis because I didn't want to. I didn't want a second guess. I wanted to act like I knew where that was going to happen. So, and then I got filled. I went along like a zillion dollar position. Just to make it worth my while. And then I let it go. And I didn't, I didn't take anything off until it got up here. And then they took the whole position off. And then when I pulled back to the 618 of this, I got in really happy. And then I wrote it to here. I dumped the whole fucking thing and went short. Shorter than I've ever gone in my life. When I came back here, I got out and I said, eh, I'm good. I did not trade. No, I'll be truthful. I didn't trade the rest of the chart. Because I thought, you know, fuck, I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to pepper some buy limits in here. I'm so tired from making all that money i'm just kidding I, i'm kidding right but you know wouldn't that isn't that the dream so when you see the charting books you know and we're, i feel like i'm in that setup right now to be honest with you this doesn't happen very often that you're under the floor of the monthly close and you're like wow fucking a man like that is deep i mean if if you loved it at this price, you got to love it at this price. Well, what's wrong with this? Like, I thought you were bullish. Yeah, moving average turned up. 
But I, I actually hear people talking about, oh, I'm just going to get out of my Bitcoin. I'm like, now? <laughs> okay. I was in this trade with this friend of mine. I went to school with him. We, were, we bought Pan Am stock. Pan Am was in the newspaper. There's no quote machine. We just looked in the newspaper. So every Sunday we'd talk to each other about it. And I was like, yeah, maybe we should buy some. People don't understand Pan Am as an airline. It's never going to go out of business because you know, it's a really cool airline. They go around the world. What could possibly go wrong? And their stock kept going down. I was listed in the, in the uh, it was like the cheapest thing on the exchange. I think I was ready to get in. But it would have been doomed. It would, You know, I think it might have had a, a bounce in there and some of these things do come back you know so a lot of these stocks are going to get hammered here and the NASDAQ looks pretty fragile and it's okay you know it's okay shit's like overpriced you know a lot of shit's overpriced movie stars all this stuff overrated you know yeah he's okay and uh we don't really chart that stuff too much. Opinions. But the prices are opinions, I suppose, or uh, the view of reality. It's just too fascinating, honestly. The markets just cracks me up. Bitcoin, for, for sure, because it's like, um, oh gosh, it's such a, it's 24-hour market. It literally is a, um, a ledger. It's like a P.O. box, I suppose, which are going away. I guess it's just too expensive. It's just too hard to maintain a box on the wall. I mean, ho, <laughs> ho, So the post office is like, yes, or no, no, the bank. I'm sorry, the bank. Oh, we have the the bank's like, oh, somebody has to walk down the ha hallway. Hopefully, I'd grow a hot girl with a skirt on, you know. <laughs> I guess that was the problem. They're getting molested, but, you know, the, the it's so quaint, you know. Go down a marble concourse with their heels clicking. Can we just bang in the hallway, please? Now, if they have a bank like that, free checking, and you can molest the secretaries. Well, it's part of the thing. It's the new, it's like a secretary escort bank, escort service bank. Yes, we have the, oh, I was at a bank on, on the other side of town one day. And they have a preferred customer section in the bank. It's Chase Manhattan, J.P. Morgan. I think J.P. shows up with his P. Hey, what's up? J.P. here. Thanks for being a preferred customer. A firm handshake, certain look in the eye. Yes. Yes, right this way, we have your safe deposit box. Would you like a look at your Bitcoin? You're not allowed to take it with you. The government put a lock on it. But you're allowed to look at it. The new law says you can look at your gold. You just can't take it home with you. But it's going to be okay. You're going to be fine. Oh, I'm so glad you could attend. Come inside. Come inside. It's going to be fine. Oh, yeah, Bitcoin. No, we got it right here. No. Oops. Did you lose your, oh, your USB drive? You know, here's the only retribution or the only the silver lining in the cloud is think of the guys that lost their, remember the guys that said, oh, you know, my hard drive's in a landfill. Now they're going, you know what? I I probably would still be holding my Bitcoin, so I guess, um, gee, will it occurs. Or would they have sold at the top? See, here's the where you kick yourself trade, too. You can never think like that. Once you're out of the trade, you're out of the trade. You should have a clear mind, but it's very hard not to have an attachment to your last winning trade. Can I do that again? That was amazing sex. Market is just the best sex, honestly. It's because it's very romantic. You never know when you're going to lose, when you're going to blow up your account. That's how I feel about um, relationships, you never know when it's going to go terribly wrong. But if, but if you're on your best behavior, like as long as you don't 
molest the person without you you don't want to draw you don't want to do like a uh, bill cosby there and be like hey you, you sure you don't want another drink you don't want to do that you don't want to do that but uh well unless you have to honey you love me don't you i let you sit in my bitcoin trading chair with a special hotkey keyboard buy and sell remember i told you Buy low, sell high, honey. Don't chase the market. Baby blew up the account. I said, wait till the end of the year to buy the Bitcoin. The last month of the year. It's a secret trade. <sighs> wait for the market to calm down into this. Bad news is on it. It's surviving the bad news. It's a glorious thing. You too could be the guy that bought Bitcoin below the seventeen fifty handle, seventeen five hundred. I believe is the magic price. Based on the uh the bit factor of two bits is twenty five cent increment. Twenty five dollars. Just keep moving the decimal point. So there, I've let go of the secret. Um, the holy grail of trading is round numbers, quarters, halves, tenths, eighths. Slice it. Slice it, dice it, scale it in, scale it out. Unless you see the floor, you want to do a hard dump. Build and dump is another classic technique of uh, accumulation, price absorption into your trading account, adding to a loser. Of course, man, that's like a it's like a it's like being married or something. It's like a bad relationship, you know. Oh, it's always adding to a loser. Honey, you're sure you don't? No. Okay, she doesn't like. Yeah. Oh, thanks, honey, for being so. Oh, yeah, she's very understanding. <laughs> She keeps throwing frying pans at me. I'm kind of embarrassed to tell my family. <laughs> honey, it's not honey I shrunk sh the kids. Honey, I beat the husband. Officer, darling officer. All right, I see what you're saying. Very understandable. Very much so. Bitcoin, I just can't get it out of my mind. We're getting a shallow dip, waiting for the euro dollar to drop. Come on, baby. Oh, it wasn't much of a sell-off. Hey, we captured these tickets, though. Look at that. I kind of like that trade, actually. I have to wait for it to go up. I'm going to come in just underneath it with two-hour two hour scripts now. No, three hours. Risking 20 to make 33 here. It's like market orders. Better than market orders, though. Look at that right there. Four-hour tickets come in here. We'll stack them and rack them here. We're just going to fill this whole thing up. They're going to let me put all these tickets in. Spread is under a pip. Commissions are like a half a pip. So it's like one and a half pips. It's like a 15 cents on a... A one pip stop. So we're gonna we're gonna hope that tanks some more because I don't think we hardly put enough tickets on that. Oil's about to turn down. I think. I think we're gonna start melting down. They're gonna drill and uh, oil's done for the year. It had its fun. Oh, sure, you had this wacky president that has his head up his fucking ass. <sighs> kind of a do-gooder dumb fuck. Old school racist dumb fuck. Um, but, you know, this is the hood, right? You know, you're just not hood unless you vote for me. This is all that matters on oil. 
are these lows here. So I want it the crush into this. I'm happy if we make it back to here, I'll be able to uh, count on 350 a gallon for gas. Well, actually, about uh, $3 a gallon. Just the hope will bring it to here. The fear is very violent in both directions. So this is the fear, I think, on the upside. So just below the 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 whole the box of fear, the fear box. <sighs> and that's uh, on its way to this, uh, hopefully to this void to crush in. That gets back to 60, uh, $65 a barrel. And then all we need to do is dry up the volatility, which if you look at the monthly chart here, which is quite a quite a view of, of the, the true market structure that we're really in the middle of the road. I'm going to call this the middle of the road um, of this giant road here. This is the whole road, and this is the middle, I'd say. But uh, it really depends on your view because if you're only looking back if all you see is this part of it I'm thinking well looks like we're going to dip down here possibly and crush into that and um, on the monthly this is the hysterical moment is the, the blow through this then retap that and then come back That looks kind of dead sideways. Ship, you know, I'm just gonna bullshit now. Dollar CAD looks like the dollar is gonna start going up against the CAD again, maybe in the long run. But I'm happy just doing the dippity doos. So here was the dippity do trade on the weekly. You got to have deep pockets on this one too. It could be very long. Just coming up to break even on this ticket or coming up to just getting out uh, with just the spread maybe. If you can wait for it, I think by the end of the week you could be at the top of that box. So if you martingaled into the box, if you could afford that, that's quite a bit of money. Especially get a co cover in that with about 80 tickets hopefully buying 60 of the 80 down here at the bottom all the RSI tags here this big divergence too if you could wait for that divergence who could wait for that really <laughs> right, it's not so bad it's a week one week uh, four hour chart giant compression on that It closes under the floor of this close. So robot could have locked that in. That technique, this buy here is punishing because it's so deep, so deep. That backlash is so vicious the other way. So here's a classic, right? Just like the other one. Once, once you go below this lonely wick, You can make it back to the top of that box. You did that here. So if you could withstand this and this pattern is repeated right there. The idea of selling this is exactly the same as this little piece over here. It's just that um, this is very tight. That's always happening. On the four-hour chart, if you just put your order right on the close, sell limits on the close, here it, it does cut beyond it. So you have a sell limit on the first peak. Even though the market's down here, you put your sell limits just for there's no optimal entry so you're just going to start here and go all the way up 
So using the closing price, so sell when it's here all the way up. I wouldn't worry too much about the wick because if you have buy limits under this close or buy limits here, and actually the that's an inverted hammer kind of so to speak because uh, or shaved candle down because it closed right at the edge of the range. Like this is a climax right at the edge of the range of the 4-hour basis. But since it's filling this hole, see, this is the dollar cat. It's no different than the dollar euro. Anytime you can fill this deep cavern, you need to have sell limits up here if you're a limit entry guy. Just like this one, it's the exact same pattern, though this one's deeper. This costs more than this one, and this one's actually longer legged by so much. But it's these, it's these voids here. The aggressive trader puts in sell limits in that void and then really sells like a mother up here. Aggressive trader has sold uh, this rally and cashed out, sold this, this, and sold heavy, heavy, heavy. And that guy's going to make more money because he's going to sell this lonely wick and above here, heavy, heavy, heavy. Heavy above this, heavy above close. He he knows above the wick here, but if he just commits the selling from this to this, never gets filled on that. This is the cause for this effect down, right? Because it just, boy, that's whew, satisfies that void always. And this trade is very fast. You have sell limits here in this void. You're probably going to sell this floor, and it overshoots, crushes in, maybe fucks your trades because you're not expecting that big a pullback. Who's expecting this? Um, if this is the cause for this effect, then this has to be the cause for this effect but this is actually pretty damn insane if you do consider this to matter which I don't think it matters anymore once it gets destroyed but this would be your uh, bottom becomes the top this is the pivot argument that this pivot it has something to do with this well the only thing that this has to do with is that when you dip into that window, come back. Now, the next time you dip in, yeah, this is fucking crazy. That's helping, too. So that's why this, look, actually, this looks more vicious. Because when this one probed down in, I think this, if you think cause and effect, wait, this the cause zone. The fill here gives you this price pulse, but when it takes out that floor... It gets reconciled by the end of the week right there real quick. And then there's one more leg coming into Sunday night. And then this week is, wow. And since it's coming back to the, um, like market profile says, anytime it spends time here, you've got a bulge. So there'd be some type of, because this one, the bulge is going to be like here. The most amount of trading that's happened. <laughs> it's a really rough estimate. But now with screaming here, maybe it maybe has come back to here. I'm not going to do that kind of trade. Like, I'm waiting for it to come back to here to go here. But, like, anything that happens on here on out, I would just keep running buy limits beneath if I didn't think it was big enough and just let it go. Now, I'm going to dump everything here for certain and then reload on limits, but that's just me. I'm going to just dump it all, reload. So if I bought this limit or I bought, um, I bought this pocket, and I scalp to here, I could go flat in the middle of fair value and then and then put my cell cells in this void. So waiting for the void to form. Here's Lonely Wick. I got my tickets in, cash out. I don't have to trade the other direction. I mean, all I need to go is one good price pulse or one good psychotic rip. Like when it takes this out, huge accumulation, giant cause for... Uh, well, this effect, and here's the cause for this slam dance on the top. So just vicious reconciliation there, just bam, 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 just 
brutal. This is Dollar Cat. This is why people can't stand the Dollar Cat because I think it's stopping them out. It's just so vicious. It's just a range trader's dream because these countries are separated by like about, uh, you know, few yards of water I mean, this is neighbors this is like euro versus look at euro versus pound it looks like euro versus dollar versus cad yeah because dude they're right next to each other like what's the shipping cost nothing so it's really it's a true exchange it's more of a uh, exchange market the uh, trending market every now and then it has spurts where as you can claim it's on a trend but it's a trend trader's nightmare Anything is in a sense. It's eighty percent of the market's chop. People see what they want to see. They want they want to see that that uh, yeah I can I I can confirm it because sure when I did it on this it did work and then it stopped working. Oh no! You mean the robot couldn't fucking contour itself to every zigzag that it didn't even know was coming? No. Come on. Now you are putting me on. No, you're kidding. So I would be dumping here when we get to 80 on the RSI. I'd definitely get cashing out, you know. Sellers are coming in there. They were right on the other side. And every time it got above here, sell. This is a great sell on RSI. It's actually a reversal, I guess, here, right? Kind of. But this is certainly a big, actually, a divergence up there. But I'm not going to do that either. I'm just gonna look at the pure price structure because I'm have too much time. I have too much time invested in putting orders in the market, and I don't really have time to look at the fucking indicator and go, "Oh yeah, well that, well yeah." I would, I would, I would have just pulled the trigger naturally because it's under the floor. I'm not gonna buy because it's on the vernals. Um but it is kind of cute that that does happen, you know. Like there's no divergence here, right? This thing's already. Well, I guess there is there. Yeah, so this divergence here, it's so steep, you can hardly tell. It's three periods. So divergence here, but this is such an insane move. Yeah, you kind of buy, I'm buying because it's below here. For the reason I'm getting in, this might be the, you might think it's a good trade too, but for different reasons. We could both be making money. We could both be right all the time and making different amounts of money because we have different size trades and we have different frequency of trading these patterns. As soon as people see an indicator that works, they say, well, does it work on the 15-minute chart? Well, maybe not so much because there's more noise on a 15-minute chart or there's more zigzags. So on the, on the, on the weekly chart, it looks amazing. You know, you could put an eight-period moving average on a weekly chart and be like, yeah, this is good until the volatility gets so steep that now you need a three-period moving average just to keep up with the speed of the market. The speed of the market keeps changing. But structurally, things don't change because the structure is spelled out of, like, what is the volatility, what's laid into the structure of the market, where the indicator is riding along blindly, taking the most recent piece of data, except for the index is stacked up at exponential stacking of all the data, right, crunched down, which is a moving average. The index is just a really clinical look at the it's the M, original macd it's the difference right it's the difference from the standard deviation in the middle because you can't have a one period rsi but you have a two period rsi every time the market moves how far did it move and um how far did it move and the frame rate is per per bar and that's uh I guess I should maybe put that on the phone, the RSI. It's 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 a quick and dirty way to say, look, it's down. I, maybe I should buy. It's a reason to investigate, I suppose. If you just pulled the trigger below here and you just pulled the trigger below there, you certainly wouldn't be overtrading the market. If you had no bias, would you take trades above in this? Uh, this is the beginner's toolkit is, should I consider a sell here? Not should I just blindly pull the trigger right these are good sells until the market starts to trend and then it's like well is this a good buy well not really because it just kept crushing down is this a good buy well i guess so but then it just kept crushing down it was until it wasn't okay but 
I think people are going to go analog now. People are really going to sit tight. NASDAQ looks fucked. Like, we are coming into the floor here, and I just don't know. I think there's, I think we got to take out just like oil has to fall into a hole. We got to fall into a hole on NASDAQ. I suppose the same thing with the euro dollar. Let's see here. Yeah, euro dollar's got to come back to. If it's ever going to really go up, it's kind of kind of come back to something down here. At least go after this. RSI says sell. Certainly not going to chase it. That's the weekly. And it looks like um, pullback on the daily. I would be short off of this thing, holding it overnight. Coming into the jobs report, we could take out the lows from the beginning of the week, which is only down here, not very far away. I can see the candles now. And... Um, yeah, RSI just not does not include these uh these wicks. Although I've run RSI on highs and lows, but it looks too strange, so I don't do it. It's not right. It's supposed to be price over time. The high and low is could have happened at any time. We don't know when those happen, so it's just nothing but a sh it's a dead body that you can't tell how old it is. There's no forensic data left. It's been stripped. Come and get your Bitcoin. Do I hear oh, it's the old Delta on Bitcoin? It's, it's itching to fall through the floor here and just, just disappoint everybody. You won the lottery, but you didn't uh, come claim your ticket. Oh, well, look at you. And gold is a big sell on the monthly. I'd totally be dumping my gold above this rooftop. I know the bulls have their hearts set on the utopia that gold... Don't forget, if the world comes to a fucking end, gold will be at about $500 an ounce because everybody be selling it. That's the. This is the uh, trend dream. Takes out the highs here. You'll see. Bitcoin will go down and... Everybody will buy gold. What, so they can have it for dinner? This is not going to matter. Oh, fuck gold. Throw out your gold teeth. Come on, people. There's gold in them heels. RSI says sell. It's a classic. Draw your trend line here. It's coming up in the resistance. If it gets more of a bot at a lower price, you get your first reversal. It'd be like really crazy like this. No, you'd have to get like a, to get a real reversal, you'd have a couple zigzags and then get a, I don't see a, uh, don't even see a buy on here. Well, here's kind of a reversal buy this one. Didn't do too well. Hit the target. This is a better one. More oversold. Higher price. Oh, here's a buy. Trend lines like this. See, more oversold. From here to higher price. But then, big old divergence. So you got to get above this. Not really divergence, but if you... That's the monthly chart on the weekly. I'm sure it's divergence. Let me zoom out. Put it on the weekly. Okay. Yeah, it's got a reversal on the weekly to sell. But, of course, this is kind of suspicious because we've already had this reversal... And the triple, I don't know, looks kind of like it's going to sneak above the, sneak up here a little bit and dick around and be just go nowhere. Yeah. 
So, hmm. what a mess. Look how messy this is. How does anybody make money trading this? Oh, my God. I guess you're excited when this happened. People were excited there. What the fuck is that? Yeah, those people were excited back then. Nobody cares anymore. We're all doomed. We're screwed. We have to wait for the end of the year. The dust has to settle. People's heads are starting to come back. We've equalized the situation. We popped the bubble. The real estate bubble. Bitcoin bubble. Fucking oil bubble. The fear bubble. I still see people wearing masks. Cut it the fuck out and do not get in your fucking yellow mask in your goddamn electric car in the goddamn grocery store. Please don't do that anymore to me. Don't you know I'm shopping? Who are these people? Like, don't they know I'm in the fucking store? <sighs> and why are you in the aisle that I want to be in? And why are you looking at... Out of all, you ever go in a store, there's nobody in the fucking store. In the aisle that you want to go to, some goober fuck is staring at the fucking rack. Dude, I know what I want. Get the fuck out of my way. You know, I know what I want. Can I have it? Would you please move? Or they stand there like they're not in. Dude, people are walking around you. You're like a parked fucking car in this aisle. Jesus Christ. And they put this fucking, they're trying to sell you shit in the grocery store in the fucking aisle. Dude, this cardboard fucking promo pack's got to go. I don't care who's sucking your dick for this. You've got to get that shit out of the aisle. I cannot fucking take it, man. I'm just going to build my own grocery store. I'm going to buy Bitcoin. I'm going to build that out of Bitcoins. Bitcoin back goes back to sixty four grand. I'm cashing out. But I'm not gonna have the balls to sell it up there. I'm not that guy. But I like it here. That's I'm, I'm loading up. So my retirement funds in there. I think when a country says they're gonna base they're gonna use Bitcoin to back their fucking and it goes down like it's like, wow, that is uh that's brilliant. I vote for him again. Fuck him. I'm not going to trust him getting elected. Let's get him selected. How much does it cost for his re-initialization uh, campaign? Can I just donate here and just guarantee he's going to be installed? Who you select? Oh, it's just like getting candy out of that machine. Let's see. Um, of course, your cup comes down with the red pop spring off to the side. Oh, I miss the days of, like, robots like that. Well, you put money in here, and as long as the sk the greases are skidded, <laughs> as long as you grease the skids, this thing's going to come out and just, oh, we got the wrong brand cups. It looks like it's tilted for you. Oh, geez, sorry, your pop's all in the drain. Circle the drain, gold. Bye-bye, gold. We're going to drill for oil. And, of course... Who's going to take credit? Well, that, that inflation bill finally kicked in. Yeah, you remember that inflation bill we came out with? Where it does a bunch of goofy shit. That's the most sideways shit. Yeah, by the time, it's like when you donate, to, um, come donate to our fund. Well, how much money actually makes the recipient? Actually, none. But don't you feel good? You donated. I do feel better. Now that you mention it, I'm kind of feeling cozy about my Bitcoin trade. I know it may never go back up, but I feel like I'm participating in mankind's experiment. The great experiment of crypto. It's blockchain, don't you understand? Like, dude, you can't, you can't do this with it. You can't do that. But it does have any intrinsic value. Well, um, just a minute. I'll get to back to you on that. But I think that, um, hmm. I could brag about it. <laughs> Is that intrinsic? I got some Bitcoin in my wallet. You want to see it? How big is your Bitcoin? It comes in quarters. Oh, yeah, it's about uh, two and a half inches. My Bitcoin's about two and a half inches. Well, that's 
that's before I invested in it. When you invest in it, it gets bigger, though. You just got to invest more than you've been investing, that's all. No, I think they're laughing at those Bitcoin people, but one day they won't be laughing. They're going to own you when Bitcoin goes to a million. I own you, son. I'm going to open up a Bitcoin exchange, and I'm going to use my my money to fund um, make um, porn great again. Make hard Make hardcore porn great again. Debbie does Dallas. What's behind the green door? Do like animation versions. Let's get the Hollywood stars involved. Okay, so I'm going to go watch my uh, favorite um, nonsense YouTube. Um, I can't get enough of hearing about people that decide they're going to kill somebody or maybe they just decide in the moment the heat of passion they're pissed off because they're short and they're and the market keeps going up and they decide to kill their spouse but then they go the extra mile by deciding that you know what i think it's not good enough to just kill them let me either chop them up cook them and eat them or let me um find an ingenious way to get rid of the body and I don't know why. It's just the morbid morbidity that 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 it's just so disgusting. I can't resist watching it. And the fact that it's a true story makes it even more fucking unbelievable. And I just can't get enough. I don't know what happened to me, but um, I can't resist watching this shit. And of course, the documentary uh, factors. I can't. A documentary is. I could listen to that on a loop. Have you seen the documentary? So I recommend this if you're into uh, visual shit or production, video production is the Stanley Krubik uh, video cinematographers. Both of them are talking about The Shining and how they filmed it and the cameras they used and all the shots they did. It's just unbelievable. I think it's it's only been out there for about six months maybe. Anyways, it is amazing. These guys talk about that this is handheld and this motion camera and how this scene was that. And this is one take, but this is a hundred takes. It's pretty amazing. So it's very just fascinating. Um, and the way they describe it, like, yeah, I'd film this. I'm like, did you film this shit? <laughs> wow. Looking over the shoulder. Behind the scenes stuff. And I guess we want to think that our indicators can see behind the scenes or the institutions we know with. That's the um, mystique of uh, the ICT is that, you know, he he's hung out with these people that make these big decisions, you know, about where the market's going to go. And when they pull the trigger, you know, the market moves the way they say it's going to move, you know. I don't know about that. That's kind of hard to believe that... Um, because why didn't the big boys come in and save Bitcoin? Well, they were all short. Well, it was smart money. See, you're the, you're the dumb money. It doesn't. But your your trades are invisible. These guys are regulated. They can't hide their tickets. They can't spoof the market. So in a real exchange, right? Regulated exchange. You can't spoof the market. That's just loser talk. They spoofed my trade out of there. Who said you had to get into that trade in the first place? Don't you take responsibility for your own fucking life? That's also the whining shit from the fucking Dodd Franks of the fucking world nanny state fucking regulators. Well, this fucker was regulated, this piece of shit with this fucking Bitcoin trade. He's all regulated to fuck. Like I said, they're, they're, they're fucking in bed together. They're gangbanging each other, 69ing it. It's about fucking love fest of bullshit. It's a fucking choke. 
And the richer people are, the smarter people are, the smarter somebody is, the more gullible, gullible they are. I know that. My, I know that I'm so naive. I'm so naive. I'm like, that sounds good. I like that. And then I investigate it. Yeah, maybe not so much. But what's the time window? If you're super impulsive, you're just going to jump in. Yeah, no, she's really, no, this girl, she really likes me. She's a meth head. Well, she's doing meth, she likes me. Maybe I'll just get her some more meth. Head. Her teeth fell out. I bought her new teeth. She's still hot. She's meth hot. She's, you heard of heroin chic. This this chick's meth fucking hot. In fact, I'm kind of in love with the fact that she's missing a couple of teeth. She's more, she's, she's at least, she's a true fixer upper now. I kind of like the idea of like a challenge. Hey, babe. Come over here a sec. We're going to get you some teeth. Did I ever show you my RSI? Three period. No, I know it sounds short, but it's dynamic. Very dynamic. That, listen. At least it's not a two-period RSI. Can you imagine? Like, where is it? Are we trading yet? No, it's very sensitive. No, really, it's it's better. It's like what you got, babe. It's that little guy in a canoe. It's like what you got. <laughs> it's a little dude. Anyways, that's all I got. I got to take a nap. Take a nap. I, I'm going to go to sleep listening to some guy that put his wife in and a vat of acid and try to get rid of the body. That's really sadly where I'm at at this point. It, it's just have to, the real world's too much. I'd rather hear about the real, show me a real man, somebody that could cut somebody up and just go, you know what, I'll, I'll save some of that for dinner. Yeah, I'm, dude, a, a, a man's man be eating some, his ex-wife, you know, put her to good use. She, you know, I, she's a bitch, but she's she has nagged me to death, but you know what? She doesn't taste too bad after all. 